Welcome to Module 2, where we're going to be talking about the effects of time of day on light and color. I want to remind you that we are trying to allow color, to let color make form, not make form and then color it, as Charles Hawthorne said. So that means that you're trying to look at the color patterns, the value, hue, intensity, and temper temperature patterns instead of looking at the objects. So what we'll cover today is, first of all, a reminder of what the light key, light envelope is, how the light envelope is affected by the time of day, and how to use the four aspects of color to create a sense of the time of day. So let's dive in and just a quick overview reminder of what the light key is. So the light key is the envelope of light in which all things are contained. That came from Monet. So Monet is the first one to really coin the phrase the light key or the envelope, light envelope. So the overall light condition is what we mean by talking about the light key. It is the container in which we have the variations that create the sense of that lighting situation. There are four things that dramatically impact our perception of the light key. The first is the angle of the light. That's the angle of the light source in relationship to the subject. So it's the angle of the light in relationship to the subject. The second is the direction of the light. It's the direction of the light in relationship to you, the artist, or the viewer. So there's a subtle difference between angle and direction. Third factor is how diffused or direct the light is. So diffused means there's atmosphere between the light source and the subject that is going to break that light up a little bit. Direct light is really hard light. So it's a difference between soft light with low shadows, low contrast, and direct light with high contrast and sharp, clear light. The fourth factor is color. All light has a color. And that color is greatly impacted by all of the above factors. So I want you to remember that these factors are not disconnected, but interconnected. That the angle of the light is going to affect the color of the light. That the diffusion or lack thereof of the, of the light is going to affect the color of the light. So angle, direction, diffusion, and color are the four factors that are going to greatly impact how we're going to perceive that light. Our second key takeaway for the day that I want you to pay attention to is how that specific light envelope is affected by the time of day. Time of day is directly impacted by the first of those four factors, by the angle of the light. Of course, the angle of the light also impacts the color of the light, and we're going to see that in just a moment. In this very simple diagram, I want us to look at how the angle of the light source in relationship to the subject is going to change and alter the color of the light. So when the light, the sun in this case, is at a fairly low angle, as you see in this diagram, which it would reflect early morning light, morning light, then the light is going to be fairly warm. Yellow, yellow-orange, to even a real red-orange at certain times of year. So when the sun is at a low angle, lower angle, you're going to have warm light. As the sun moves up in the sky and the light becomes a little bit more white. So by noontime, the light is directly overhead and it's not being filtered in as many different ways as it is when it's lower. The light is clearer and it is much more white. 
So the time of day when you're going to get the most naturally white light is going to be very close to noon in the time frame between about 11 to 1, give or take the time of year. Late afternoon is very similar to morning, almost a mirror image of morning in terms of what the light envelope is going to be like. It's going to be warm in color, yellow-orange to orange and red-orange. So that is going to affect the color of the object as the light shines on it. So remember, as we go from morning over here to noon here, to late afternoon here, you're going to see a shift in the color of the light, even in a single day. Morning and afternoon will be warm, ranging from yellow to red light. Noon will be white light. So let's look at some photographs of these lighting situations. Here's an example of morning light. It's a medium to low angle. So the direction of the light is low, a low angle. But notice that the light is behind you, the viewer, shining directly on the subject. So we've got a medium to low angle light, and the direction is behind the viewer. So the scene, or the subject, is flooded with light. In this instance, we again have low angled light, it's a morning scene, but the direction of the light is to our left. So there is that strong, warm, low angled morning light, but because it's coming from the left, we have even stronger shadows that are playing across the landscape. By midday, the angle of the light is very high. It's a 45 degree angle. So the light is shining directly down on our subjects. Remember this photo from module one? This is the source photo for our first painting of module one. And the angle of the light is at that 45 degree angle. And it is a very clear white light. There is not a lot of alteration in the color of the objects because of the light. The light is very clear and white, and it is above the viewer. Another shot of midday light. This is directly overhead light, high angled light, and again, because it's above the viewer's head, it's shining down on the subject. And because it is very intense light, it can, at times, cancel out some of the intensity of the color in the landscape below. Late afternoon light is at a very similar angle to morning light, medium to very low angle. And the color of the light, again, becomes very warm, ranging from yellow to red. In this case, because the light is almost dropping below the horizon line, we are right at sunset. The light is a very warm red-orange color and is infusing the landscape with that color. The sun is behind us, behind the viewer, so it is flooding that landscape with that low-angled warm light. Third thing I want us to consider is how to use the four aspects of color to create a sense of the time of day. So remember we're dealing with value, hue, intensity, and temperature in these situations. And we want to look for the kind of contrast we're going to have in that, in all four, as well as which hues and temperatures will dominate. So in our demo painting for this module, we're going to be creating a sense of warm morning light. And the light source again is behind us. And you can see that reflected in the painting. So you have warm 
flickering light. You know it is at a low angle because the front face of the tree mass, the foliage mass, is receiving the illumination. This is another example of a painting worked from that first source paint uh, photograph in Module 1. Again, it's middle of the day. Light is at a high 45-degree uh, angle. So you have white light flooding down. And the light is actually bleaching out the, the uh, intensity of the grass below the tree. Another example of noonday light, where the strong white light flooding down from above is bleaching out some of the colors, some of the intensity of the color in the landscape below. This is our late afternoon painting. And remember that the light source is behind us now. So it's flooding the landscape with warm light. So we have warm light because of the time of day, and it, the landscape is being greatly illuminated by that light source. So we have strong contrast in value. We'll have strong contrast in intensity, with the weight definitely going towards intensity. We will have a strong emphasis predominantly on warm over cool colors. And we will have hues that are dominantly in the warm section of the color wheel. So what we've covered today is a review overview of what the light key light envelope is, how the light envelope is affected by the time of day, and how to use the four aspects of color to create a sense of time of day.